after an industrious performance against the Bafana Bafana of South Africa and Sao Tome and Principe in the penultimate and ultimate AFCON 2021 qualifiers in South Africa and Ghana, uh, we catch up with Black Stars defender Abdurrahman Baba uh, after he scored a wonderful goal against Sao Tome uh, to give Ghana a 3-1 lead and also to top Group C in the build-up to qualify for the 2021 uh, AFCON to be hosted in Cameroon. Um, good afternoon, Baba, and thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Good afternoon for hosting me. Um, there is one thing that you, you, you told me some time ago when I spoke to you, that any time you are coming home, um, the feeling is different. You, you, you love always being at home at least, to have a feel of home and then your family. Yeah. Yeah, I, when, when the date is set um, for me coming home, I'm always happy because um, growing up here and um, living the, the country to, to search for my dreams. And um, if I have the chance to come back here, I'm just always happy to come back to see the environment, to see what uh, has changed, what has um, developed um, in my absence. So um, I'm always happy coming home. First of all, let's talk about the performance uh, for the Black Stars against South Africa and then against Sao Tome and Principe. Personally, how will you rate yourself in the two games that you played for Ghana? Um, well, knowing myself and um, um, knowing what I've been through, I think um, uh, I still have a lot to, 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 to catch up with. Uh, but all the same, I think uh, um, it was an okay performance. But um, yeah, I know um, this is football and um, many people doesn't know what um, I've been through in the past um, few years but uh, yeah I'm still just um, trying to, to catch up with um, what I've lost and um, to get back to um, how I used to be. How has your past you know experiences affected your general performance either for club or for country? Um, it's really tough to say because um, I was um, really a young player when I first had my 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 injury, and um, um, I wouldn't want to um, disclose everything now. But uh, maybe in the near future, I will um, try to speak about what I've been through um, in these last four years because I'm. The type of person who is um, always um, shy away from the media. I don't put my everything on the media, so not many people know what I've been through. But yeah, um, I've been through a lot, physically and emotionally. But um, I'm still fighting because um, football is something I love, and um, I've got a big passion for football. So um, I'm never gonna call it quit um, soon. I respect it when you decide not to give out information now, but later. But just a little on within the period, this is a situation where you are not home with your family to be happy as you always be when mm -hmm. you are with them. Yeah. You are in a different land, different environment, yeah. different people. Yeah. Sometimes you are even in the house alone. Uh, in a period that you were injured. How was that experience for you and how do you relate that? That's, that's really tough. Um, if, if you are not uh, mentally tough um, with these kind of situations, I think um, you will just give up playing football. Because um, when, when I first had my injury, I was living alone and um, after my operation I had to walk upstairs to sleep and um, that was really tough for me but uh, yeah I managed to, to, to stay calm and uh, try to speak to, to, to my advisors, to my family and um, they were all worried about me but um, yeah I just knew I had to fight for myself and um, 
to get um, to get back my myself and um, to continue my career. Have you, at a point in time in your career, felt like uh, I will stop playing football? Um, yes, that was um, 2019. Yeah, I just wanted to stop. Wow. Yeah, when I first heard like the, the news about my injury, and um, I think that was the <laughs> that was the first time I. <laughs> I slept like uh, early in my life, like normal I take time when I go to bed and when I first heard the news I think I pass out in the, the next five minutes and uh, I just wanted to call it quick but after waking up making some calls and um, taking some some considerations I I felt um, I still had a chance and uh, I could still be on the pitch doing what I love. Oh, you picked that major injury at the camp of the Black Stars um, in Gabon, if I remember, in 2017 during the Afghan. Yeah. Um, from that time to this time, how has the relationship between you and the nation be, especially <laughs> during the difficult times for you and when you were feeling like? I have to stop playing football. <laughs> let's keep it next time. <laughs> we'll speak about it next time. This is not, this you, is not the time you, to say this, but we'll speak about it uh, maybe in the near future. You, you, in the course of that, you joined, uh, you know, Rams. You had a very good season. Um, you came back, joined Rem Ayoka. And uh, after a few games, you were really on top then the injury resurfaced came back again and that also put you off yeah. injuries have really been your enemies yeah and um, up to now I'm still feeling sad if I see someone like with with good legs good knees like doing everything they can on the pitch and uh, I've got some limitations so it makes me like really sad but i know i can overcome all this and um yeah i'm still fighting oh, so back really now. you 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 are now limited in the way you play is it by medical instructions if 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 you have um um a ligament damage and uh, you get it um, reconstructed you will never be the same again it might take like some years before you you get back to who you were and sometimes you never oh if you're connecting uh, we are speaking to uh, ghana defender baba abdurrahman uh, after that wonderful display for the black stars against atomium principe at a Craspo stadium um on sunday you scored your first goal for ghana uh, after all this why <laughs> How was the feeling yesterday when you buried the boy into the net? Um, at first, I didn't believe it. You know, <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, I scored, and uh, it's a moment I've been waiting for. But uh, I was like, no, today is uh, it's a dream come true, and uh, I was really excited about it. Oh, you didn't believe you had scored? Nah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think I. It, it, you thought it was side netting or what? <laughs> Not really like that, but like, I didn't see myself like scoring, you know. But I know I do get myself in um, good positions to score, but uh, when the ball hit the net, it was like, oh, I scored. So. <laughs> <laughs> when you played for Rams, you scored. When you went for, I think, Real Mallorca, I think you scored there too. Um, no. You didn't score in no, Mallorca. Not in Mallorca. But in a recent club. A park, yes. Yes, you, uh, you've scored that. Yeah, I scored. So you score. So why was it so surprising you scoring for this, this nation? Is, this is this is Ghana, and I've I've been with the Blaster since 2013, and um, you know I've had like so many assists into my name, but uh, I was just waiting for a goal of myself, and yesterday it happened. So somebody told me that. 
you were just going to score yesterday. The reason was that right from the start of the game, you kept going at the opponent's goal area, trying crossing, you know, at a point in time in the first half, you had a side net. So it was just, it was just coming. Um, yeah, it looked like that. But um, if, you, if you look at um, the way South Tommy, um have played their previous matches and um, was playing yesterday also, um, you could see that the back line was more static and um, our manager had to tell us to to break the line coming from behind so and um, through the middle they were like a bit of compact so we could only do it more on the wings so that's uh, that's the reason i i had um, so many chances or so many like half chances to to run behind them and then um, to create problems for them ghana finally uh, have qualified for the afcon um South Africa, they couldn't make it. They yeah. were kicked out by Sudan. Were you surprised? Um, after after we drew against South Africa in 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 Johannesburg, I I, I had it in mind that it would be difficult for, for for South Africa to win in Sudan because oh, really yeah I've been there and I saw how they played and. Um, if you if if you go to Sudan or when we went there, the the football wasn't attractive, you know. They just want to win. Um, the Sudanese they just want to win. So if you are not like tough with a little of, a bit of experience, then you get beaten easily. So I knew it would be like tough for South Africa to get a draw over there. Playing against South Africa at the FNB Stadium. Uh, you played against a player like Percy Tao and here is a situation where you are telling us that when you have a ligament problem you can never be the same again and here is a case you are playing against one of their top players in the team how difficult was it? I think um, um, looking at him he's um, a very good player very quick but uh, I think in the game he was kind of like moving around everywhere, so he was not like um, stuck to one position. So I think I won some duels against him, but um, overall he's a good player and um, it was um, a good test for me to, to play against him. We'll be speaking about um, Poak, uh, where Baba Rahman has recently joined. but. We'll find out uh, very quick about his previous clubs. Um, we are just about signing up. So we'll find out about his previous clubs and where he is now. There are a lot of people, including myself, who feel he should have stayed in France after that wonderful season with Rams. Yeah. Do you regret not staying in France? Nah, I don't regret staying in France. Um, I don't know, but... Uh, um, Football has um, a lot going on on the ground and people doesn't know about um, about it, you know, mm. they only see the end product, mm. but uh, I've never and will never regret uh, not staying in uh, France. Somebody says you were born for either Germany or France, Spain is in your blood and, uh, and then the UK, do you agree with that person because comparatively you've had a wonderful season seasons yeah. in Germany, you've had a perfect season in France, but Spain and the UK seem to be dangling. Do you agree with that person? No, no I don't think so. Football, football um, as I know, is all about like teamwork and um, also individual performance, but uh, I would not say um, this league is meant for this one or it's not meant for this one. That's, that's someone's opinion and um, that doesn't work with me. What has been uh, the problem or what is it that is not getting you penetrate into that Chelsea team, you know, for Ghanaians to see you in the English Premier League? First of all, um, since I left Chelsea, I was, I was, I went to Schalke and um, I was doing very good the first six months. 
and then that was all. I started having problems after, after the six months plus I was with Ghana in the Afcon in, in January and then that's when uh, I first had my injury and uh, it took me out for over a year and a half. Yeah, and uh, since then I've, I've not had like a good season of myself. So until I have like a good season, then uh, it's not logically that um, you you have to get, come back to the top again, you know, because you have to find yourself, find your fitness, and then um, you can get back to um, where you are, or maybe maybe get back to somewhere like you feel like you you have to be. Chelsea had a new coach in the, in the person of Frank Lampard. Um, you trained with them. If I we even had videos where you scored that wonderful Caesar kick, you know. And almost all of us felt that, look, this is the time. Baba is going to make it in the Chelsea setup. And we realized Lampard came up with his squad and your name was not there. Um, what was the conversation between you and Lampard before he came up with his squad? Um, it's always um, a different case when, um, when you go on loan, you know. Because um, in Chelsea they have... Oh, we have the loan, loan group and then we have the, the, the first team as well. So, um, as I said earlier, you have to, you have to get um, a good season and then um, to enable in, 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 in the process, then you might get a chance to come back to the first team. But as I said, I've been through one hell of an injury after another. So, um, I think maybe this is um, the first um, first two months that I've been really in myself, like playing and then feeling like I'm I'm You're coming I'm, back again. I'm coming back, or like I'm a human being, you know. Because <laughs> for me, like without football, I feel like uh, my nothing is uh, um, happening in this world for me, you know. So. Um, this is the first two months I've been in Park and um, I'm enjoying it. You know, from 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 Chelsea, you moved to Park, and before you left, your contract was you know renewed. If you had an, an extension of contract, and that was not the first time. Your first time with Chelsea, you had five years. It was renewed for two years. Then before you left for Park another renewal. What is, what do they want from you? <laughs> um, it's simple. Um, I think if they don't have confidence in you, they will not um, give you another contract. I'm asking uh, this question because I think like you, uh, this is a player that all this while we've been giving him out on loans and other stuff. Why don't we sell him completely and then, and then uh, take our minds off him? But hey, they still keep to you, even when the contract is coming to an end, they extend it and before they give you out on loan. Yeah, if, if they don't have confidence in you, then um, it's, it's obvious they're, they're going like, to throw, throw you out or just like, let you go for free. But um, I think they still, they still believe in me and um, this is the reason. Inshallah, season, um, injuries have been your greatest enemies, but by the grace of Allah, you are, you are over with it. And with the way that you've started at Puak, have you told yourself that before I leave here, I'm going straight into the Chelsea team? Um, that's my dream. And um, yeah, I'm just um, trying to get myself together to, to work even harder. And um, even if not get back to Chelsea, but uh, get back to, to, to myself and then um, um, just keep doing what, uh, what, what I love. How many languages do you speak now? <laughs> um, apart from German and um, English, then just the local languages, Chi, Hausa, Dagbani. You don't speak French? Nah. Not yet. Okay. I asked this question because you are now in Greece. Okay. How are you coping? Um, in Greece, I think is more similar like England because everyone speaks English. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So it's 
it will be difficult to learn the language because everyone speaks um, English everywhere. So that's that's the main reason. But if people spoke Greek in the training on the streets, then um, yeah, I would probably try to learn it. Although it's very very hard. You 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 now play in a league uh, that even though it's evil, a lot of people don't you know concentrate on the Greek the, the, the Greek uh, league. Yeah. But that's where you find yourself now. You've played in France, you've played in Germany, you've played in England, you've played in Spain, and now uh, Greece. Yes. Compared to these areas, how is their football different from the others? People don't really know much about um, the Greek league, but um, I would say it's, it's tough. And um, I think I got lucky going there um, in the winter because um, I would say from the seven downwards you get more like more like not not easy games but a games you can easily win you know because mm. Pauk is a, is a big club in, in Greek so you get a games you can you can easily win but from the first to the fourth or fifth is a war trust mm. me yeah it's a war and that is um, this time that we have the playoffs and it's only from the first to the fifth so all the games are just 50 50. you don't know if you win that or not but it's always 50 50 now i know you as a player you have personal targets for yourself um what is your personal target in Greece and um, what do you hope to leave that country with? At this moment it's difficult to, to say we, we can win the championship because um, Olympiakos is way far ahead and um, they have a good team. We can see the team they, they, they played against Arsenal just recently in the Europa League. Um, but Pauk is in the cup semi-final so uh, my prayer is uh, we make it to the final and then um, inshallah hopefully win it and uh, that would be like um, a, a perfect stay for me finally um, the African Cup of Nations trophy the Afghan has eluded Ghana for so long since 1982 perhaps my cameraman was not born at that time and, and, and still, we keep chasing it. Yeah. Having qualified in this style to the Afghan, which will be hosted in Cameroon, do you think uh, this is the time? It's difficult to say because with Ghana qualifying to the Afghan, it's, it's normal. It looks like a mere formality, you know. Because since I've been with the Blasters, um, I don't think we've struggled that much to qualify to the Nations Cup. Um, and um, the, uh, that's the target all the time. And we've been saying to ourselves, this is the time we have to win it, this is the time we have to win it. But I think um, we need to properly plan everything, get ourselves serious. And um, I think um, if the necessary things are done. I think um, Ghana have the quality, and uh, um, hopefully we can we can win it this time round. That is my dream, you know. I, I don't know if I don't know what will happen if Ghana wins the Afcon, uh, the coming the uh, upcoming Af Afcon, because um, that's the dream of almost every Ghanaian. You know, I uh, asked this question um, with reference to the young players that you have in the team now it's it's like a marriage between young players very energetic and experienced one you have osman bukhari you have kudus you have a lot of young other players in the team is the reason i asked that particular question whether if you look at the current crop of players yeah ghana can can, can make it yeah well um, i don't know but um 
um, in 2015, we went so close to winning it. Mm. And um, I think it, we had also so many, so many young players uh, motivated and um, also old players experienced. And um, I think when there's this, this, this mixture is always working, working well in favor of Ghana. So I'm hoping that um, um, whoever gets the chance um, to, to make it will bring the, the, the Afghan to us and then uh, we can celebrate for one month. For one month? Yeah. Oh, really? I think so. I think, I think yeah. Ghana should celebrate this for one month. If we win it? Yeah. Oh, wow, this is the icing on the cake. <laughs> that if Ghana should win the African Cup of Nations, we should celebrate uh, for one month. Uh, that brings us to the end of our, uh, you know, uh, interesting chat with um, Chelsea Loni and uh, Park defender Baba Abdurrahman. Um, it's been wonderful having you, and uh, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much for hosting me as well. So until we meet again, uh, this is uh, footballmadeingana.com. Make sure you follow us everywhere. Just go online, search for footballmadeingana.com and all the news that you need to know about Ghanaian players locally and internationally, everything is there for you to read. We say once again thank you to Baba for his time and we say thank you too for sticking and staying with us. Keep following us as we bring you the best. It's bye for now.